Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and today, do we have a treat for you? You don't want to go anywhere. Don't move. Get a cup of coffee and get ready for a powerful broadcast. Today, I have two guests with me, Doug and Joe Hagman from the Hagman Hagman Report. Some of you may already know them. They have the number one listened to blog talk radio program in all of blog talk internet. Um, ministries. They have a powerful program, enlightening former uh, investigators involved in a lot of research. And today we'll be discussing the New World Order, the Illuminati, and the rise of radical Islam and how they're coming together in these last days. So if you want to know what's really happening, maybe not what you always see on mainstream media, Today, on this network, we're going to share with you the actual situation taking place and, of course, the difference between us and the rest of the world is we have the answer. Jesus Christ is the Savior, the Messiah, the hope of glory. So right now, I want you to prepare yourself, get ready, take some notes because this program may shake things up in your life. Look to Jesus Christ. I'll be right back in a few minutes with my guest, <laughs> the Hagmans. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you something. If you'd like to know more about some of our books that we've written, go to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I've even got music CDs. I actually have a couple country gospel music CDs that we recorded that I think you'll really enjoy. I have five books that I've written. This is my newest one, Jerusalem Jihad. Jerusalem Jihad. This has to do about an end time apocalyptic scenario that includes the rebuilding of the temple, also uh, the two witnesses, and uh, it's a powerful presentation, if you will, on how things are starting to come together here in the last days. So again, check out all of our books, uh, CDs, and everything else we have, and your donations are greatly appreciated at our website. God bless you, in Jesus' name. You're in for a treat today. Our guest today on The Coming Apocalypse, of course, is our great friends from Erie, Pennsylvania, from the Hagman Hagman Report, Joe and Doug Hagman. Doug, Joe, I mean, Joe and Doug. Doug. I got you guys. <laughs> Everybody loves them because when, at times you don't know which one of the father and son team is going to bring it out first, folks, but you're in for a blessing here today. Let's get right into it, guys. We've got a lot to cover here. The world has went insane. It depends. Some folks are recognizing the chaos, the Middle East madness, the terrorism in France and in Germany and different places, even the threat with Orlando and in, here in America. At the same time as Christians, our faith is in Jesus Christ, and we look to him as our provider and our protector. But we can't just bury our head in the sand. So at some point, we have to be, the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So today, we need to in, give them some information. So I want to ask you some questions. ISIS, let's just throw that out there. Uh, can you tell me, Doug, who is ISIS? What are, who are they? Pastor, that, that's a great question. I think this will establish the foundation for uh, what we're talking about here. ISIS is a, 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 an insurgency. It's a, it's a global movement. Uh, of course, the acronym ISIS, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, that's how it began. It's an offshoot of al-Qaeda. Uh, people may remember back in the 1980, 1979, 1980, during the uh, USSR, or the, the Russian um, um, invasion into Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Of course, the United States had uh, uh, what we did was we, we, of course, sided with the 
uh, with the Muslims in Afghanistan. We gave them equipment, we gave them training, training especially, mm. and we gave them money, we gave them assets to fight and ultimately prevail over, over Russia. They were known as the Mujahideen. Right. Uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski uh, was a big part of brokering that deal, and the deal was with Osama bin Laden and his uh, followers. And, and Exactly. The, all the globalists back then, that, that kind of, they all came together and they said, okay, we are going to cause Russia's Vietnam, basically, it, it, grab them and put them into a quagmire, which is exactly what happened and, and essentially bankrupted the, or nearly bankrupted uh, the uh, Soviet Union and then led to, of course, the, the downfall of, of the Soviet Union back in 1992. However, the outgrowth of that, ISIS, and ISIS is, as I said, an insurgent movement that is not just, uh, uh, not just contained in the Middle East, but now is worldwide. Their presence is in every continent on the United Wait States. Wait a minute. And the President of the United States said they were a JV team. Sure. Okay. But when he, later, a year later, he said they had been contained, that they were shrinking. You right. just explained to me a worldwide growing network. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, no, no. They're not. They're not contained. And, and this is the, the narrative that's being spun out of the White House and the previous State Department. Well, the current State Department as well. But but what has happened is ISIS, uh, and we watch the different iterations of the name and, and the evolution of the name. What happened is ISIS turned into ISIL, which includes the difference between ISIS and ISIL. Uh, one is Iraq and Syria, uh, yeah, but the Islamic ISIL. State of Iraq, Iraq and right. Syria and then the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. Right, and that the Levant, the difference there is it expands to include northern Africa, but mo most importantly, Israel. So mm. what they're doing is they're, they're saying we are establishing our dominance, not just throughout the Middle East, but especially over Israel, the nation, state of Israel, as well as uh, Rome and ultimately the Vatican. So you're talking about uh, an Islamic end time eschatology That's of right. a conquering what they call the caliphate mm -hmm. right. and this includes encompassing all of the Holy Land all of Israel and especially Jerusalem uh, yes. is a major prize so this eschatology of there is, is apocalyptic I take it violence I mean they're, sh they're spreading violence like crazy is that part of their religious belief to punish the infidels, which would be Jews and Christians, or is it just part of the process? If I can, I want to just jump in here and say that uh, my father and I would talk about this a lot, and I would before tend to disagree with the fact that, you know, uh, the Muslim religion is inherently violent and, you know, thinking the, the best of people, we only see a small uh, minority of uh, Muslims that, uh, radical Muslims that commit the violence. But as my dad has pointed out, and we've had guests on our show, uh, Bill Warner won Political Islam, uh, mm -hmm. is his website. Uh, he explains this, uh, the whole operation of ISIS and the uh, Muslim religion, and explains in the Quran where it talks about, you know, if people do not convert, they will die, that they should be killed if they don't convert. And what we see is the radicalization of these uh, Muslims, and it is happening not only in Muslim countries, but we see even uh, U.S. citizens well, becoming if, radicalized. If I can jump in here too, and I think this is an important point because a lot of people want to be, uh, no one wants to be called a bigot or a xenophobic or right. whatever, but I think we, 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 we're being held captive to certain phrases and words that, that, that should not be mixed together. There should be, uh, w when, when we talk about, for example, radical Islam, we have to understand, I think it's important for people to understand, there is no radical Islam. I mean, there is Islam and then there, and then there is Islam. I mean, Islam is Islam radical, the modifier radical. Yeah. Uh, and, and he's right because what he's saying is that the Muslims who do not practice violence are not true to their religion. Correct. Which right. I did not understand. Right. And uh, which is, which they're is, apostates. Which right. is actually in the Quran. Okay, exactly. That, uh, and it does mention the infidels. and. They should be uh, killed. And so, oh, look, we're seeing decapitations. We're seeing all kinds of crucifying of Christians. Beheadings. Uh, yes. Beheadings all over Iraq and Syria. Um, and uh, at the same time, I think that the body of Christ uh, has had a, uh, 
have had a, fair, a fantasy ideal. We, lived in, we live in such a great country, all right? Mm -hmm. And so we've always had peace here since the Civil War for the most part. So to even comprehend that type of activity is even very hard for the Americans and the Christian community to, to grasp. Yeah. So this is a shock. This may be a shock to some of the viewers right now. And uh, they know what's happening, but America could be in line. I just, I mean, just recently, ISIS just made an announcement that uh, London, you're next, Washington. and Washington soon. Do you, is there, a, how many sleeper cells, are, Joe, Joe can tell me, I mean, how many sleeper cells do you think there may be in America? Well, I wish I had a number. Um, you know, we, talk, we hear about these lists, these ISIS kill lists that are here in the West. Uh, some numbers I do have. In 2016, the U.S. has taken 3,726 Syrian refugees. 23 of those were Christians. Whoa, 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 whoa. 3,726 refugees. And only 23 are Christians. But it's Correct. the Christians that are being butchered. Mm -hmm. it, but they're not the ones getting to come in here. They're actually, in many cases, uh, being stopped from coming over um, in favor of uh, Muslims coming over. And where are they? Because in Syria, pre previous to the uh, civil war that was created by the, by the United States, by our policies, there were 1.1 million yep. Christians in Syria. Today, there are less than 250,000. So where are a where million are Christians? They're They're not statistics. coming to America, right? No, they're 23. Statistics. They're dead. They're, they're dead. dead. They're dead. They're dead. Okay. Dead. Or they flee they a little bit into some mm -hmm. of the other nations that are also radicalized because of the Arab Spring with Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, and Yemen. Right. Okay. Syria. It's created yeah. in Syria. It's created this entire Middle East of madness. Mm -hmm. and, a vacuum uh, of power uh, in the Middle East, set up by our own foreign policy. I, 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 look, we got to take. I got to take a break. All right. I just got just to regroup and understand what you're sharing with us today, and we also need to know how does this portion of radical Islam come together with the new world order, the Illuminati. You'd be surprised. It really does. All right. Folks, we'll be right back in just a few moments with the Hagman. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now, it has to do with actual, 35 actual accounts of demonic possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling, but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft, seances, Ouija boards, or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry. Oh, yes, we are back. We are back. Our guests today, uh, Joe and Doug Hagman, this father-son team, dynamic duo, I like to call them. And, uh, and, and as you've been watching, they are experts in digging out the information, not only globally, and what's taking place with, let's say, radical Islam or the Middle East in the state of madness, but also the connections they have with the Pentagon, Department of Homeland Security, some of the different sources they have, we're, we can also get some information about what's taking place in the formation of the New World Order or the spirit of the Illuminati, or let's just say this, the beast that's in Revelation, which is an ugly monster, guys, and it's rising, there's no question. Now, we've covered some on the radical Islamic side, but we've got people, we've got global elitists that are involved, Bilderberg Group, Bohemian Grove, secret societies. They're building underground cities. They're preparing to escape the coming apocalypse, if you will. How do these two different events going on marry into one situation. Can you tell me, Doug? You know, Pastor, that's why I love the title of your program, The Coming Apocalypse, because we are seeing that take place right before our very eyes. What we're seeing here is this Islamic movement that is 
it, it, they believe, when I say they, I'm talking about the, the core of it, the Muslims involved in ISIS, for example. They believe in this apocalyptic cosmic war where the, the, the installation of the, uh, uh, the, the, the Mahdi, the, uh, the uh, caliphate, will be made not just in the Middle East but worldwide. This is a war where there are no moral restraints or constraints. For example, we recently saw the, the massacres in, in Paris and in, uh, Normandy and other places. Uh, we are going to be seeing this here in the United States because, and we have to look back into history, we have to look back into World War II to see how Islam has been used, has been um, uh, weaponized, specifically Islam has been, been weaponized back in World War II as a tool of the globalist, which we like to call today the New World Order, or the globalist. So with the weaponization of, of Islam, because Islam is, is inherently is predis, predisposed to, to, uh, to violence, that has given the globalist the tool, the, uh, the, the global army, to cause the chaos necessary to set up the, the final days. Okay. And so that kind of, so now the globalists have, have found their perfect tool in the army of the Islamic, uh, the Muslims, through ISIS, which is now, it, it's, the, it's the Hegelian dialectic, it's the... Uh, uh, problem reaction solution. There you go. And the problem is, is Western democracy. The, prob the problem is Western values, Judeo-Christian values. The you mean it's not George, what George Bush said and that they hate our freedom? <laughs> yeah. Well, the antithesis, of course, is the Islamic theocracy, which they want to install. And then, of course, the ultimate uh, 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 synthesis, it will be the, the establishment of the one world, new world order, mm -hmm. in which it's going to be a Marxist base mm -hmm. that will lead to, of course, the technocracy and the... Uh, mark of the beast. So you're saying because there's such a tendency within Islam of uh, authoritarian Sharia law, right? That at the same time, socialism, super socialism, communism, uh, totalitarianism, dictators will rise. We're seeing something like that happening right now in Turkey. Yeah. It looks mm -hmm. like uh, that you know he suffered a, the president of Turkey suffered a deadly head wounds politically, but he's going to use it to his advantage for more power. So in America. Uh, and, and worldwide, and we're talking the elitist, they're preparing for something they know is coming. We as Christians know Jesus is coming, okay? Mm -hmm. And so we're not afraid. Jesus is coming, but he isn't here yet, and the world is changing, and the violence is increasing, and they, you know, they can't drop enough balloons at the conventions to make me feel good. <laughs> so yeah. uh, help me understand where well, they're at. First of all, let's look at the uh, politics in America. We have a, a two-party system, and many people don't understand that the two-party system is actually one party with two faces. There is a, an agenda uh, that is run by the spiritual powers of darkness in high places that use the political system to, to carry out this agenda. And to take a quote from, from David Rockefeller, when he was asked in 1991, um, about the success of their conspiracy of a new world order, he said the following, we are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promise of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop a plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity during those years. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government a supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. Um, and we see this today. It's you quite know, the, the, uh, the nomination of the Republicans, Donald Trump, he, they call him a nationalist. Right. They used to say that you know, the globalization and world order was a conspiracy theory. Now they are saying that it is what needs to be, it ne it's what needs to happen. And Donald Trump, they say, will set back their uh, plans for a one world government. Now, Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, um, my dad's done extensive research on the Clinton Foundation uh, and their past, all the way from you know Arkansas 
to where they are today. And uh, she's very transparent about the fact that she will continue to promote this new world order agenda. Now, uh, occult writers like Alistair, uh, Alice Bailey and, and Crowley and Blavatsky, uh, there's a book called The Reappearance of the Christ in which they say that the coming Messiah, this is going to be a man, it's actually the Antichrist of the Bible, um, will come to a world that is prepared with a one world government in place. And we are seeing that being put together today through the United States taking the lead role um, and allowing these globalists to work freely in this country without the exposure. Uh, the media is complicit in this and the government's complicit in this. And we are so close to this new world order being implemented. It is almost like it says in Revelation that everybody will make a choice. You will take the mark or uh, you will not exist anymore. So this, uh, as these agendas, this globalization, which we hear that all the time, globalization movement, is actually carrying, following along with biblical prophecy of a one world government, a one world leader, the Antichrist, the false prophet, uh, one world system, the mark of the beast, a one world currency, a one world religion, and we see all of those pieces and parts simultaneously being advanced. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as Christians, I mean, our job is to keep shining the light, all right? Keep telling people about Jesus, keep saying, look, there's a better way, you can be blessed, but we can't bury our head in the sand. We got to understand what we're dealing with here. There are spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, we got about a minute here. Can you help me understand, uh, Doug, what, where do we go from here? Well, I, I think intellectual honesty, I think disclosure of, of, the, of the grander plan is what we need to really embrace. What we're seeing is the globalist, the, the, the power behind the faces that we see. Uh, the power brokers are setting up this perfect convergence of events where there will be economic uh, uh, destruction. There, there's gonna, there, there will be chaos. Order Just, out of chaos. Right. right, and ultimately the order out of, out of chaos is what they're after. And that order is going to be a tyrannical uh, uh, response to the chaotic uh, events taking place in America. And it, by the way, people think in America, well, that's just happening over there. Uh, recently, a, a French priest was beheaded. Right. Uh, this is coming to America. And it, once this does, a sufficient number of people will say, wait, wait, I, I didn't think this would, would be coming here. And it has come. I it, mean, it, it, it certainly it's has. It's not in the uh, uh, frequency and intensity that we see overseas in Europe. But the San Bernardino incident, you have uh, the Orlando nightclub massacre where the shooter pledged allegiance to ISIS. And in and our neighborhood, uh, years, a couple of years ago, the head of Bridges Television, uh, which was an Islamic uh, station, uh, cut the, his, wife, uh, his head, uh, uh, yeah. wife's head off in the, in the station. Right. These Islamic communities that continue to right. uh, you know, appear in, the, in this country yes. uh, that are protected by our government. Well, I tell you, uh, there, there's no question this broadcast is to help inform people of what is really happening, and there's a lot more that we want to bring out about what's taking place around the world and here in America. So i got to have you guys back next week, all right? Got to have you next week to Absolutely. finish this. We can't stop now, all right? And so we'll be back with some more information in just a moment. A brand new book I've just finished called Reflections from the Land of the Prophets. This book is filled with beautiful pictures, a pictorial, if you will, of the Holy Land and some definite great insight to the prophets that once spoke mightily in the times leading us up to the present. It's a prophetic word, a reflection of what God has spoken not only historically from the past but for the future. Go to my website. It's available now. Available from Paul Begley, his CD, Wayfaring Stranger. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger Traveling through this world be Wayfaring Stranger includes the title cut plus 11 other songs. No Order yours by visiting paulbegleyprophecy.com today. Wow! 
<laughs> All right, I, I told you to get coffee and calm down and, and absorb what you had to hear today, but I'm telling you, to next week when they come back, we're going to give you part two, the rest of the story. But uh, I'm so excited about what you guys have brought to the table today. Let me just say, your book, Stained by Blood, uh, is a tremendous read. It's a true story, a murder story that you wrote and researched. And uh, we'll talk more about that next week. Okay, it's powerful. But most importantly, folks, all the information you've heard today should help you understand there's nobody in this planet that can live in this world and be able to survive the judgment of God without Christ. You can't hide. You can build underground cities. The Bible says that they will do this, but when they see Christ coming, they will cry for the rocks and the mountains to hide them from the face of him who sits on the throne. You can't run from God. You can't ignore God. You can worship idol gods if you want to, but like what happened in Thailand when there was a 6.0 earthquake about three years ago, nothing, no building fell. The ground shook violently. Once the quake was over, the people walked over to their 40-foot statue of Buddha and his head had broken off and fallen to the ground. The shocking realization, if you have to pick your God up, you got a problem. <laughs> My God picked me up, okay? He picked me up. And I can tell you right now, Jesus Christ is the only hope. And he is not only just hope, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Matter of fact, Christ said, the thief cometh not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. You can be blessed going in and blessed going out. And no matter what happens, I pray against the New World Order time. I pray, God, please help our nation. And we can take America back. We really can. But we've got to pray. We've got to seek the face of God. But you, are you saved? Give your life to Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord, and he will save you. We'll be back next week right here on The Coming Apocalypse. I want to invite you to come with me on the sea tours to Israel. It's going to be powerful. This coming up this November, the 9th through the 18th. It's going to be a powerful time in the Holy Lands. I mean, you're going to be, you can be baptized in the Jordan River. You can renew your wedding vows at the marriage of Cana, where Jesus turned the water into wine. You can take communion with me at the garden tomb. I mean, this will be a powerful time. Now call the number on the screen and say, I'm going with Paul Begley to Israel. Heidi Begley's got a brand new book called Finding My Father. Heidi, this is a miracle journey, isn't it? A miracle how you found your father. A journey just full of miracles. He left when I was three months old, found him again when I was 30 years old, and it's just miracle after miracle. It's a page turner, it's a tear jerker, <laughs> and I guarantee it will change people's lives. So get a copy of her book right now at my website.